All right, it shows that it shows that we are live. Michael Collins of the Wandering Wolf channel. It is a pleasure to connect with you. Uh, thank you for coming on today. We've already met a few times uh, in person, and uh, yeah. we've really hit it off. We're on the same wavelength about a lot of things. And brother, you are you are traveling the world. You've been to. Hold on one second. I got my volume on my rumble thing going here. Forgive me. Now we're good. Uh, so you've traveled the world. You've been all over the place. You just got back from Easter Island. You've mm -hmm. been to Baalbek. You've been to Egypt. You've been to Peru. Uh, where other places have you been? Uh, Angkor Wat. Uh, golly. Obviously, Stonehenge, places like that. Right. In Europe, uh, all over Bolivia. Um, Tiwanaku, Pumapunku, um, man, a lot, uh, a lot of different places all over the world. Yeah. It's been, uh, Japan, Korea. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. A, little, a little about you. So your prior military, you had served overseas, um, before getting into YouTubing, you were in a sales position. And one of the things that we have in common is that we both basically pulled the ripcord, stopped doing the corporate world, and then decided to pursue a passion of, you know, traveling the world and seeing ancient civilizations and exploring the mysteries. And how I came across you is that you went to this spectacular place in Montana called the Sage Wall that nobody's heard of. Uh, for example, my girlfriend's family lives in Montana uh, about two hours away, and they've never even heard of this place. And so I come across your video and I'm like, this looks like a, a ancient megalithic wall. I'm like, could it be uh, mostly natural. Could it be man-made? Could it be a combination of the two? And then I started seeing, you know, going down the rabbit hole of your channel and seeing that like you had traveled to so many different places. So, um, tell me just, where do you want to start off with this? Like to everyone listening, let me just say we are streaming live on rumble and YouTube right now. And you have some new data that has just come out at the Sage wall involving ground radar. And mm -hmm. we're going to get into that a little bit later. Uh, after we talk for a little bit, we'll move this over exclusively onto Rumble. So let's like save that for a second. And and let me just like straight up ask you, well, what is the Sage Wall? To people we're that trying to know. figure that out. I, I'll tell you right now, it, it, you know, it, it, it's interesting that you said that uh, about Montana and people not knowing about Montana because there, it, it really has been going under the radar for quite a while. and. Um, you know, this, when I walked up on the site, when I saw it online, I knew it was a place that I had, I, I, I felt that I could contribute something there in, in terms of like getting the drone footage would be a perspective that would really highlight the site. And um, I, I really feel like that's what's kind of brought it to the forefront front. It's just seeing how straight this place is. But walking up on it was very similar to um, visiting sites like Saxe Wuman and places like that, that just were kind of like, are you kidding me? When you, when you walk up on it in person, and, um, you know, it's, it's explained away as a dike or a geological formation most of the time, mm -hmm. but it has a lot of different features to it that are not typical of dikes. Um, you know, that uh, I spent some time looking at, it is not similar in those regards and the way, in the level of its straightness and the horizontal patterning and, and a bunch of other stuff that we will get into. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, um, I think the the fun thing about sage wall is the way it posed that that question what is going on here and i love a good mystery and a good adventure and so this was right up my alley um i've been out going out there now for two years and working with the property owners chris and linda and uh, they have been amazing at uh, allowing me um, access to the site and getting all this information and being part of a process and so i, I think sharing all of this with everybody um, has been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun filming it, and it's really exciting chasing down these answers and finding a bunch of information um, uh, that's that's exciting um, to to kind of um, to learn about the site. And that's ongoing. And real quick, like to touch on what you just said, is that one of the coolest things about this place is that it's so accessible, especially for people yeah. here in the United States. Because in the U.S., if you want to go see some ancient stuff, you're flying to Peru, you're flying to Egypt. Right. You're, you're, you know, international travel, but like, so I'm in Phoenix, um, or at least the Phoenix metro area, and I can yeah. jump on a plane flying to Bozeman in about two hours. And then less than an hour from there, I'm at the Sage wall. So like, what's so fun about this is besides the fact that it's mystery where it's like, what exactly is this place? 
but it's a site that everyone could easily access. And for not that much money, you could get, you know, a $200 plane ticket and, and rent a car and be out there, you know, later in the afternoon. And, yeah. you know, you and I were talking about this, like debating, like, you know, or, or discussing the debate rather on whether this place is natural, man-made or a combination mm -hmm. of the two. And the fact that if nothing else, this is a place that finally, like you can have, you know, geology students, history students, yeah. a place that people can go out to and, and get off their butts and go get some, some fresh air and, and go breathe in the pines, yeah. and get some sun and, and go see this for themselves. I a hundred percent agree. I, there's, this is a no lose situation. So there, you know, a lot of people want to come down on one side of the fence or the other, whether that's a geological mm -hmm. formation or whether it's potentially man-made or has man-made influence. Um, ultimately, by doing the research, we're contributing to either side at the end of the day. So we're gathering information in a way that's going to be, um, I think, beneficial, um, whichever way it ends up going. Obviously, I would love to discover a new ancient man-made site. Uh, but like I said, either way, we're, we're working towards something that's going to contribute uh, one way or the other. And uh, the process is fun. And like you said, this is something that... You, North America is uh, notoriously devoid of megalithic sites. You know, it just ends in Mexico. Why is that? Mm -hmm. And this is a place that you can go and experience. And you're going to have, I mean, walking up on this wall is, is, it's just incredible. So even if you're a traveler, like I am, I go to a lot of different natural places as well. Um, I've been all over Iceland and different places that are just full of natural features that are just breathtaking. This is up there. So you know, you don't really need an answer to the question to go enjoy the site. And well, it is open to the public. Right. And I should point out to people, and by the way, we're going to be showing you guys a bunch of photos today. we got the folders up. And I should mention, and and I, I you know, I'm going to do the name drop for you, but like your video. So about, you've been sharing the content of your own travels to the, the Sagewall, Montana for yes. two years now. Mm -hmm. And one of your videos particularly got a few hundred thousand views and you brought it on the map. I came across, I'm like, what the heck? Well, come to find out you had gotten the attention of Graham Hancock. And then I made a share on this on Instagram and Joe Rogan saw it. And so now they're both following you and you've done something which is so rare in this realm where a lot of people are talking about the same topics and it's rare to come across something new. And with you putting this out there, like you're the guy now. Um, there's a lovely woman named, uh, uh, is it Judy? <laughs> Or Julie, 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 Miss, Ryder. Julie Miss Ryder. Uh, she has been out there for years. We should give her yeah. some love. Uh, yes. It was kind of her spot, but like, unfortunately, her videos on it got, and I say this with love, but so few views that nobody had heard of it. Then you make a video, it gets hundreds of thousands of views, and all of a sudden, everybody has heard about it. And like I said, you got the the attention of people such as Graham Hancock and Joe Rogan. Speaking of which, you just had dinner with them, uh, with uh, Graham Hancock and his wife, and then had drinks with Joe Rogan just a few weeks ago in Austin. I shouldn't name drop, but I'm going to plug you to make you look cool because you are. <laughs> and now all of a sudden you're mingling in these cool circles where it's like, you know, you've just contributed something so great because let's be real, dude, to anyone listening, and, and maybe if you could prepare some some pictures real quick of yeah. the Sage Wall so people can get an idea. But um, if this site is in any way a remnant of a lost ancient civilization of North America, this is going to rewrite the textbooks. This is an unbelievably big deal. Like this, let's just be clear. The, there are natural boulders out there. And the question that we're at now is, did a, a lost ancient civilization, potentially tens of thousands of years ago, construct this wall into the flush nature that as we see it today, hundreds of 300 plus feet long, is it? Um, and, and so if this turns out to be like an actual remnant of an ancient civilization, it's a game changer. Like right now, we were talking about this earlier. It's like so many people yeah. are looking at these footprints in North America that are like 20,000 years old, 23,000 years old. And it's like rewriting the textbooks in itself. I'm like, well, if this is a, a long lost megalithic wall, that is next level. Yeah, uh, it completely rewrites history, it, it, specifically for North America, but the implications there are worldwide, 100%. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's always been a question of mine as I've been traveling is why are there no megalithic structures that we found in North America, every other continent on the planet, you know, we have these structures everywhere that, that just blow our mind and can't be explained. And it right. just not in North America. Right. And we've got, yep. you know, we date people being here back, you know, long enough to have, to have done it. So, um, 
Yeah, it, it, it's an interesting question and definitely a, uh, a mystery worth unraveling if we can. And Sage Wall is uh, definitely, the whole Montana area is full of a lot of very interesting features and stuff. But Sage Wall stands alone in, in its uniqueness in terms of being so similar to some of these other sites around the world and its, and its construction, its straightness, the, 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 the blocking of uh, the wall and, and different stuff. And I think you made an excellent point there. Uh, a minute ago, I believe, about the, um, the, the influences of, of possibly being man-made, but also being old enough to show weathering and erosion as well on the site. So you have to kind of take that into consideration. There are things, right. you're, you're looking at things that can negate each other if you just firmly put your feet in one camp or the other. Totally. And I think you need to look at the possibilities and really remain open-minded to the fact that you could have both levels of influences going on here at the site. Right on. Can you can you bring up some this this shows some slides um, yeah. and show people the wall that we're dealing with and that it looks like polygonal or polygonal stones that have been pieced together and that's what we're talking about is that did people come on to these natural features and piece it together because once you see it the first thought that goes to your head is like there's no way that's natural there just is no way and and, and let's just share while you're bringing up these slides I'll share with people that the scientific explanation is that this is a volcanic dike. And a, you can look at pictures from around the world of other examples of volcanic dikes. And this looks nothing like it. It is not, it, it is different. Um, all right, so hold on, I'm gonna add you to the stage here. So just real quick, fire, just, okay, so wow, what an epic photo of how straight that is. Let me see if I can just- <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Will you uh, take it, just do a little uh, a show and tell dump. Just keep showing yeah, photos so, so people watching oh, yeah. can like look and think for themselves. Yeah, and so let me just, um, use this right here, this picture as an opportunity to go over just a few of the things that we've been doing as far as studying for the site. We 3D imaged the site, uh, you know, uh, part of a, an awesome group of guys that are doing independent um, stuff out there, um, some in Montana, some other places. Um, and my buddy Sean has uh, um, been contributing some 3D uh, imaging and stuff that we've been able to plug in. So we've done a 3D imaging of this site where he's been able to look at just the exact straightness of this wall, and it is just mind-boggling just how it perfectly straight the wall is. Now, sometimes you can see there looks like little curvatures in here, but if you look at the bottom line right there, just how straight that is, you'll get an idea. Photography can come sometimes throw things off a little bit. We, we put this in programming, in that 3D imaging program, and it's just showing just an incredible level of straightness. This, this shot right here really showcases that. It really um, does. And then right there, you can see that that happy face with the arrow, that's a person down there. Oh, wow. That's a six foot tall person down there. As the wall is just massive. So, you know, hopefully that can give you a sense of scale here, but, um, you Actually, know. how it, tall it is, is it, excuse me, uh, uh, it's, it looks like. That, that is definitely uh, something I should know offhand, but it, I'm gonna um, uh, show us some more photos, and we'll let we'll let yeah. the, we'll all do, we'll figure it out together. Right, right. Leave the chat like, oh, that's easy, twenty five feet. Look at it, I can tell. Because <laughs> we have measurements of all of this, uh, but there's a good other top down picture, um, and they're from drone footage that I took. Keep um, going. I want to see it. from like if you could show us one of the ones from ground level where you see it face on, because that's one of the ones that really just. Here's oh, a good. Yeah. I should also let me give you a quick shout out that in your travels around the world and documenting various different sites, you've had multiple network television uh, companies purchase your footage and use it in shows that are on mainstream television now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've had uh, content featured. Uh, the drone footage is really popular and that's been just hugely instrumental in my travels. I make sure to take a drone with me everywhere I go. And um, uh, because it just, as you can tell, it, it adds on an entire other label a perspective to, to any site. Um, but when you're watching it on YouTube or anywhere else, um, uh, it just enhances the, you know, it, it helps you get a, a scale or, in terms of perspective instead of being on, on the ground the whole time. Right. Um, but yes. Yeah. Thank you. That's been, um, it's been a lot of fun being able to, to, to kind of collaborate with um, different network programs and stuff like that. Um, and, and using the footage uh, uh, for those things. Um, the uh... yeah, okay, nubs. See, this is this is evidence that humans have at least, if nothing else, 
did things to these stones in ancient times. Go back. Uh, well, here, I'll let you present. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. So I have, um, and I think I had it here. So the photo on the left is from the Sage Wall. Mm -hmm. And the photo on the right, I was in Egypt about six months before. These are side-by-side -side comparisons. You have a square cutout. There is a channel, right? Some of this is hard to see. Um, it is because of the color of the stone. I know I've Correct. seen, I've yeah. tried to take, these are, this is the hardest stone to take photos of based on its complexion, its color, because it doesn't look the same from right. what you see with your eye. But there is a channel going from that stone square cutout, just like on the right, that goes down into a circular basin type depression, and then the rock is broken there at the bottom. So you have the half of the circle before the break. But you can see the the, the um, similarities between the two. You also have um, some other features, and 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 the surrounding features at the site is something that I've tried to, you know, really hammer home with people to to make them aware of that they've been less. Obviously, everybody focuses on the main feature, which is the wall. But there's lots of surrounding evidence. We have these cup holes um, in a stone that's right next to the wall. And these can be found all over the site. There's a couple other ones that are just perfect holes and stones right next to the wall that I found on this most recent trip up there. Um, and you can find these types of uh, depressions, these cup holes, in all over the world. Um, right. I've seen them on every continent. Um, you have areas like this that look carved out. Could be for tool sharpening or what have you, but evidence that at least people have been there, Native Americans, whoever, yeah. but have been there and, and been to this site, if nothing else. And I will say, um, Chris, uh, the property owner is, when we've talked, you know, they've, that whole area has um, been used by Native Americans for quite a long, extensive period of time. And in fact, this entire area, in this part of Montana, used to be used as a gathering place for different tribes. So there's there's been arrowheads and all sorts of artifacts and stuff found all throughout the area. Um, you have areas like, like this that are very similar to nubs found all over the world that are sticking out of parts of the rock. The nub uh, phenomena. Let me yeah, give a quick shout out because I want to give these guys some love. There's a gen a bunch of a group of gentlemen on Twitter that, you know, they're kind of like this nub group where they share these, these, this phenomena. Uh, there's Andrew from Ancient Hi uh, History Criticisms. There's Phil from Ancient Alternative View. There's the Stone Nub Language. There's a few other gentlemen, and I'm, and I'm on the spot here. But these things are found like five continents around the world. Yep. Um, and those sorry to cut you off, but I want to give them some love know. because a those, lot of people aren't sharing amazing. their work. Yeah, good friends of mine. They're all doing amazing work. Um, you know, Andrew, Phil, Crispin, Ziggy, all these guys are Ziggy. that stuff and keeping up with it and dropping information from places all over the world and collecting that data. Right, um, which is great because Show that a few is more photos of this so people could see that like how unlikely it is to be a natural thing that people have out here and screwed around. So you know the 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 nubs is um, I'm not you know I I'll take pictures of the nubs everywhere I go when I'm traveling so you'll see them featured in my videos and stuff if you pay attention. Um, I'm I'm not quite as in depth into it as the gentleman that we just mentioned who are doing amazing work um, on 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 the nubs. Um, a lot of times people try to, dis to uh, describe these as um, inclusions. So something that if you had a dike or a volcanic formulation from a geological perspective, it might have been some kind of abnormality that was then, I guess, in the stone and then weathered away somehow, creating these nubs. And so if I guess if you broke that off, there'd be something different in there. But, it, you know, it is very similar. And being that it, you know, this right here collectively with all the surrounding evidence and then the straightness of the wall and all the other features of the site i feel like it's just it should be included in terms of more uh, uh, uh you know surrounding evidence corroborating evidence for the right for the stuff. and then we can work towards you know getting into these more in depth but as far as collecting data right now visually and through footage definitely something that i would want to include is these nubs okay. and, and different Keep stuff so Keep going down like you have I because I already know what photos you have. So I'm like, bro, yeah, yeah. keep going. Like you've got some killer shots. Um, that is undoubtedly marks of of human intervention. But like let's I see mean, some of the, the poly the polygonal stuff because I just want to okay, okay. the, the most amazing so, stuff. I want to get people's attention. Yeah, see, look at this. 
So I love this spot right here. It's just up a little bit further back from the wall. Um, but you have this, this blocking type of uh, stuff going on all over the place. And, you know, I had an interesting conversation with um, uh, Chris, the property owner, actually today, um, pointing out, and I'm going to say it wrong now that I brought it up, but, um, you know, a lot of the arguments sometimes are about these vertical lines going all the way down and that nobody builds that, which is untrue. He was telling me about in construction, um, you know, the um, using vertical stuff stuff sometimes uh for uh expansion joints i believe is that what he said but the um you know for it to breathe so if you if you're building something on ground or something sometimes you don't want things to you ever seen that wall at machu picchu it's been on twitter lately where it's kind of collapsed on the sides but the, the middle has maintained its shape sometimes you want a little bit of movement right you would let you want the wall to shift if, especially if you're in a seismic area um but we'll you know we get into all that as we continue to gather data. But here's the main thing. And oddly enough, oh, someone yeah. pointed it out on social media the other day. There's another wall-like type thing up and over the hill back at least a half a mile from this. That was, And they pointed it out. They pulled my footage, showed that picture, and pointed it out to me as if, well, this is just another formation right there. Isn't this pretty? Well, no. The other one is uneven and it's vertical nothing but vertical breaks all line what we don't see in a lot of or any that i've really seen is the the horizontal stacking like this in dikes right so if you go and you right. start looking up dikes um and examples of dikes all over there most of the time they look very shattered and broken off in pieces as if they've been forced and cracked and up and stuff like that but anywhere where you have solid pieces together that are fitted together they're not usually horizontally straight like this sage wall is unique in its appearance and its formation so right if this is an you know um if this is a natural formation it is a very unique natural formation right but these the horizontal blocking and stacking here i think um is is something that definitely makes the site and then you'll notice there's similar is my mouse showing up here yeah okay yeah you notice a similar type of rocks structure and, and when you get to the top of the rocks they become smaller they're all similar for the entire length of the wall so you know and we know that this goes down much further and some of what? that i know we're going to save for for is, for hearing a little bit from the results from the uh ground penetrating radar but i can right. tell you right now that this goes down much further and we know that for a fact right now so this 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 area goes down approximately 15 feet down the length of the wall to to a, a, a lower level and i'll tell you what we found down there yeah um, what, hold on that thought yeah because yeah, yeah. we're gonna i want to we're gonna bring that exclusively to rumble in a few um do you have some other photos you could share of people standing next to this in front of it so they can understand just how big this thing is? Yeah, I know that absolutely. you have a whole number of photos. Um, Let me see because if there's anything before I... Because this thing's a behemoth. Yeah. Oh, there... Just... And I'll, I'll, I'll show you that. That's the other one that is right there Yeah. at the wall. That circular... Whatever you want to call it, uh, is not... That's that's human intervention right there, I mean, Unde no doubt. Isn't that amazing? Right now, so, to people listening, it doesn't mean the whole wall is is an ancient historic, you know, a monument. But like, <laughs> we're just we're setting up the stage here, which is like people have been there. That's a fact, which I don't think anyone would disagree with. That'd be silly, but um, that is undoubtedly you know evidence that uh, ancient Americans have done some sort of tooling out there. Um, and and let me know if you're if you're looking for photos, I could always bring up some of mine from the Montana Mega List. I had, uh, which are pretty much all your photos too. <laughs> I've got the I'm bringing up the ones with the um, the geophysicist that was out there working doing the uh, work. My my problem is I keep doing what we were having the issue with before we hopped on. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Photoshop. So I've got it now, and <laughs> let me share it with you here. While you're just, while you're getting that together, let me just mention something we were talking about earlier. Uh, 
so since you have brought attention to this, this site is now being monitored far more uh, closely by various governments, agencies that study geology, uh, as well as companies that do, um, uh, what do they do? Just ex exploration of ancient sites? What was it? Um, no, like, so basically this, it's a company based out of England. And I'm gonna be releasing a lot of this kind of um, at some point in regards to um, what is going on there. But they, they were contracted through the government for doing surveys out there all around that land. So, you know, it was protected land. Um, it's, and it's, so this is on private property that backs up against government land. Okay. That's a huge, you gotta, all right. So real quick, people need to understand this because it's an unbelievably important point. This is on private property. And it's one of the reasons why this has been unknown for so right. many years. This is in somebody's backyard that owns tons of acreage. And right. they didn't even know about this site until what year was it that they had to dig out? Because this whole site, when they came across it, was covered in foliage, right? And half buried. Will you yeah. explain that to everybody so they understand that it's private property and mm -hmm. it was consumed by the earth in up until how many years ago? Yeah, it's been well over 20 years. So I think it was back in the 90s uh, when Chris and Linda discovered it on their property. They moved out there to Montana to, you know, they had this dream of building this retreat and, um, you know, uh, um, a uh you know kind of an eco-friendly type um thing going on there and uh by the way you can go to the website and they, they have such a great story listed out there i'll get um, right now what's their website and because it, it's sagemountaincenter.com i people believe. can google it and then you could set up a tour you can call now just to clarify mm -hmm. it's call it's appointment only you call or you only. email do, do not, not show, up. show up right yeah, do, do not just show up yeah yeah, that um, way uncool. Um, because this yeah. is somebody's this is somebody's property, people. It, um, it's their private <laughs> home and business. Right. right. And now it's all snowed in, but once the snow melts, you know, later in the spring, you're free to go there. They I was supposed to go out there this summer with you and I couldn't swing yeah. it. Um, but this when this uh snow thaws coming up this next spring and fall uh summer, hundred percent gotta go there. Yeah, that'd be a great trip, man. Yeah, and it it yeah, they 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 typically will let you come up and tour the site for um, between May, depending on the weather um, and the snow melt, into I think they shut down in maybe around August, July, August, sometime in there. Um, and and so because they do have to leave themselves enough time to do prep work for winter, that whole area gets snowed in immensely sometimes. But you have to go to go to their website, sagemountaincenter.com, and you'll want to. Um, schedule and book a time there and you need to sign some release stuff and, and and make sure to agree if you're filming or doing drone work or anything like that or if you're doing anything like that to 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 get all that okay with them um, but you can go visit it and like you said earlier um uh th this is a place in the states that you can go see you can you can drive here if you're close enough it's a simple flight and there's lots of other stuff and amazing things to do around the surrounding area so you know, there's plenty to get into, and uh, but yes, please be respectful of the property, and 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 their business and their home, and go through the website, right. book yourself an appointment if you're going to do that. Chris and Linda um, have been so good to you, and so I'm so happy that you would emphasize that. Like these people don't have to do this; they could just keep this hidden. Um, mm -hmm. And they're good people. I can't wait to meet them personally, and they've worked with you very closely. And so that's like so something very important to emphasize to people because we know how the weekend warriors are. People just show up. Um, but, but, but that being said, show us some more photos. So what we have here is the yeah. ground radar happening. Will you show, will you go through a scan of showing us some more photos so pe more people can see these anomalies and aspects of this wall so they can think for themselves? Absolutely. Uh, this gentleman's name is Carl. He's a geophysicist. He has been working with uh, Chris up there and collecting data and, um, was, you know, very surprised from my understanding with his findings. Um, mm. so that's him. That that's the ground penetrating radar right there. Um, and, um, he did a lot of measurements, leveling, um, and different stuff like that. Um, measuring the length of the wall, the height of the wall, the, all sorts of different findings. We have all of that. We're compiling it. Um, there's plans. I'll be releasing data and making a video. Um, there's lots of other big plans in the work for next year that I think people will be really excited to, to see, uh, happen. 
but it is an ongoing process. I know a lot of people just want all the information right now, and I know that's how I like to get stuff. I prefer when Netflix releases the whole season instead of one episode a week as well. But you know, you got to tune in for some of it because we also have to kind of parcel some of this out. We don't want to put things out prematurely as well. I gotcha. And you're also, and I, I know there's certain things you can't share on screen here, but you are working and doing some other things, uh, some big projects involving this stuff. And um, real quick to anyone listening, follow Mike on his channel, Wandering Wolf Productions. It's on YouTube. He's just getting started on Rumble. So the link is in the description or type in Wandering Wolf Productions. It'll come right up. Uh, but mm -hmm. follow him on YouTube and follow him on Rumble. Help this guy. You're doing amazing things and like you're this gem of a channel that a lot of other people haven't heard of yet. So I hope people will give you the love and, and go and hit that subscribe button right now. Again, uh, just to talk you up, you, you blew Joe Rogan's mind and he hit the subscribe button, which is kind of like a really, really cool thing. Uh, when someone as, you know, I adore Joe Rogan and he's such an inquisitive person and he has yeah. so many different interests. And when something gets his attention, it's usually something special. And it's one reason why he has the largest platform because it's like a lot of people get it. You know, they see it's like, I find that interesting too. And so you wowed him, you wowed uh, Graham Hancock as well. So I hope uh, people will follow your work to see because do we we were talking about like, hey, we're going to talk about Baalbeck. We're going to talk about a bunch of things on this podcast and we've been focusing on this wall. Um, <laughs> it's, it's an easy one to, to, it's an easy rabbit hole to dive into for yeah. sure. Uh, but, you know, uh, yeah, the property... It does back up to that government land just to touch on that other uh, the other topic, too, because it, it is kind of exciting. Some of the stuff that's circulating around this, not just the interest of uh, of uh, people, um, uh, you know, major personalities like Joe Rogan or Graham, but, um, you know, who've seen this stuff and been interested or liked it and, and supported it. But also, um, you know, that that governmental interest that, that we briefly touched on was, you know, the that you know years ago when this started kind of coming to light well the government started deciding they needed to do geological surveys and or for deposits of different types of minerals and stuff out in the area and so next thing you know they have black helicopters flying all over their property and you know, over there some of that um chris the property owner has video of that he'll be getting to me that i'll probably be releasing if we have any good footage you know it's been a few years since um he took some of those 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 pictures but we hope to release some of that too but the the agency that they hired is a company based out of england who's known for doing these surveys for countries around the world one of the last things um, that they did uh, you know they have a reputation for damaging sites oddly enough other ancient sites around the world so they were hired to do surveys down in uh, australia after, just randomly happened to be after a site was discovered down in australia and they blew that site up and uh, chalked it up to um, ac an accident. But there was a site discovered. Next thing you know, there's they start saying a few years later, they start it starts gaining interest. They decide they need to do geological surveys in that area. They do. They blow up the site. Hmm. Why are they doing so much research around sites that all you know these geological sites? of deposits that always happen to be around something of interest, right? That's a bit, you know, it's just kind of another. Makes your eyebrow know. go up. It's like, yeah, you know. <laughs> when I hear about black helicopters flying over something right. after it gets a bunch of attention, I now know I need to look in that direction. Like what's going on here? Right. Um, will, you, will you please keep showing us some more photos yeah. so people can see of this wall? Because some yeah. of the best photos that I've seen. Um, oh, so look at that. Look how straight that sucker is. Yeah. And, and you know, like I said, some of, some, sometimes the pictures kind of distort or make things look curved. That one, but, but that keep is going because I know you – what's that? I'm sorry. Oh, that, that, that – it is straight. I mean, it is a straight line, and that's a much better perspective there, the straightness. But And when we show you one of the uh, shots from the aerial drones, again, you can see that it's literally just – I love that shot right there. That's a good one. And now, you know, if I run my – mouse over it here I, there's there's things that seem like they would be man-made like some of these blocks here but then you see stuff like here that maybe cracks over time from weathering and erosion right possibly even seismic movement but the level of weathering on this wall you know it, you know we depending on how back how far back we may eventually be able to date this could be significant 
tens so, of thousands of years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can tell that there's areas like this one here that were all one solid piece at one point that have broken off. So you have layers and stuff like this. Like this looks very natural and and broken, some kind of break. But you can tell that all that all used to be one piece as well, which is a very nice rectangle. So yeah. we keep going in here. And that's Carl on the right. He's the geophysicist working at the site. And Chris, the property owner. Great guy. So there's some more work. And it's very interesting to see some of it happening in real time, like the, the ground penetrating radar and stuff. I wasn't aware that that's what it looked like, that you could just roller it down, you know. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. And it starts making me think, like, man, how much do these things cost? Because that is very easy to do if you know what you you're can doing. rent them i know yeah. they're available for rent we should go we should. Yeah. you know what i mean like yeah i got some ideas looking, rod take one <laughs> things start looking possible when you can make things portable like that and to anyone listening like i encourage people it's like look i'm a guy who just got off the couch and started pursuing a passion you did the same thing and it's like hey guys like the world needs more of this you can rent stuff you can get a camera you can put it on the internet and then it can just go viral. Like you're, you're, you had that video that came out on the Sage Wall that got a bunch of views, and then it just took you to a whole other level, pretty much overnight, yeah. literally. Like it's like all of a sudden a bunch of people are seeing it, like, and 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 here you are. So it's like people, you know, you can make things happen in your life. All you got to do is just head in the direction of interest. And um, but go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I think you have stuff to share here. Yeah. No. Um. It's just it, it's very exciting to see the work being done. And it is, I, I'm of the opinion that the more the merrier, um, the more people that get out here, document stuff, film things, film things in your area. I, I get messages from people all the time because I'm going to these places that are kind of relatively unknown a lot of times. You know, I'm getting met direct messages from people in emails and all sorts of stuff saying there's these things in my backyard. I, I, I do this hiking trail all the time and I've always seen this thing here. Go out and film them. You guys, this is like everybody can contribute. There is nothing yep. preventing you from going out filming it. And if something is uh, is decided that it's just natural and it's not a thing, so what? You had a good experience. You keep doing it. Um, that's, it's part of the fun. That's the part I want to emphasize here because I guarantee you there's people in the comments saying, this is 100% a natural feature. And like, first of all, you don't know that yet, but let's just say that you are correct. What we're encouraging here, what, what's so great about this, um, and I look at the same way with like the Rishot structure. It's like, hey, listen, regardless of what these things are, you're bringing something new to people that they've never seen or heard of before. And 100%. then you're asking questions and they're going to learn something new. Like for me, although I might be partial to think that the Rishot structure is the most likely site for Atlantis for so many reasons, but even if it turned out to be false, I'm like, what happened to the Sahara Desert? So the same thing goes along right. the lines with this with Sage Wall, which is like, if this is totally natural and humans never did anything to it whatsoever, well, it's like, this is an anomaly that doesn't look like any other volcanic dike anywhere on Earth. And this is an opportunity to learn. This is an opportunity right. for people to go outside. This is an opportunity for people to put down their stupid smartphones and, like, you know, go pers go look at something with their own eyes um, and learn something in the process. I think, I think, I couldn't agree more, by the way. And I think what a lot of people continually miss who take the argument of, that, that like to argue with people who ask questions about stuff like this, especially in regards to sites like this, is that, is that you know, the scientific process generally, I mean, how many examples do you have to have of people failing a thousand times before they find the right thing? So, you know, if if failure is the measure of, uh, uh, of your definition of somebody's success or doing the right thing, you're off track. Let's yeah. keep failing at some of this stuff until we, we find the things. We're all in pursuit of the, most of us are in pursuit of, pursuit of the same thing, which is finding new information and uncovering this um you know shady past of ours that we've been given um and, yeah. and 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 told and the only way to do that is to keep doing the work and if sometimes the work means crossing things off and sometimes you have to cross a thousand things off before you hit that one thing yeah but will you as you're talking yeah. will you go over to a couple more photos real quick yeah. so you have them lined up there's some, I, some of the best photos some of these people haven't seen yet keep uh go over another just keep toggling a little just keep going Oh, the wall is magnetic. Oh, that's cool. If I didn't mention that before, by the way, 
I, the wall no, is magnetic. <laughs> I just learned something new. You had mentioned something to me, but I hadn't seen it yet. How cool is that? That's fun. That's and fun. And the reaction, there's a, you've seen the geophysicist, uh, oh, Carl, that's working. That's a good shot right there, brother. But the there's a, the, there's a geologist also who's been working on the site. Um, and we've got, we've done lab results on the stone and we've been getting that back. The level of magnetism on the site, um, from what I understand, was surprising to really? to to to, um, to them to the geologist. It was a higher than normal level for um, uh, of iron and stuff like that in these in these stones. You have to understand too; this whole area is very rich in minerals and uh, crystals and all sorts of stuff, quartz. And uh, um, so, f for this to uniquely be at a much higher level than than the surrounding area is something is saying something um but watching wow. them stick that magnet on there and it just stick to the wall is pretty amazing <laughs> i love it let me see going, so brother. I'm, Show us. I'm, I'm at the end there on those pictures. okay no worries um i like how it like when you pan out on this video and it shows you the wall right i mean dude See that's just so cool let's see yeah right here that's my favorite part look at that what you know it doesn't look totally natural to me i'm just <laughs> saying i'm not saying that these blocks these stones weren't something that existed there but the big question is did ancient humans lift and stack them together um i want to see i have another I have some photos that you had sent me that shows just how straight and even is, especially from the aerial view. Let me do a share screen on my end for a second here. One second. And I want you to let me know. I heard from multiple people that the drone video was definitely what brought it to, to you know, got it the level of interest that it ended up getting. I see. Can you see this now? What I'm sharing? Yeah, yeah I can. So I'm yeah, just going to do a little, uh, a little wow. dump here. Yeah. And you said this is a pro yeah. See, this is one of the ones I was thinking of how flush it is. And you said it's over 300 feet long, correct? Uh, that sounds about right. Yeah. It's massive, and it's it's really hard to. It's really hard to share with you just how impressive it is standing up next to it. I mean. I went to it the first time and I was just blown away. But even the second time that I went, I had the same level of reaction where I was just, really? Are you kidding me? I thought it would have hold less. It would be less impressive the second time around coming out a year later. And it wasn't. Right. It was just you, as impressive. Real quick, can you see my mouse? I can, yeah. Like when yeah. I see stuff like this, you know, when I see things like this, like yeah. look, I'm not like right here. That's obviously natural. Those are some fissures. Right. Um, you know, so like just to clarify, you know, we're again emphasizing here that is this a combination of a natural feature that was constructed and pieced together by people? And so yeah. the, we're not saying that there's no evidence here that this isn't natural. The argument is that is it something that 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 was natural that humans started playing with? Because when yeah, I see or, pictures like that, or man-made that has been, it's so old that it's been worn down over time and has natural influences on it. I, I will say that previous picture that you just had, um, that, and then if you go to the next picture that you were just at, that structure on the previous picture is to the left of the wall here. So what oh. little, little note is that there is a parallel wall mm. that is in a uh, greater um state of disarray where the rocks have collapsed and fallen over so that last picture was a wall of collapsed stone but you can easily piece it back together in your head you can see where everything's fallen that was in a wall shape par exactly parallel to the to the main wall i see it's very interesting and one of the things that's unfortunate like being out there in the woods, it can make it difficult to get one picture that shows everything that's around because like you're surrounded by foliage. And so, yeah, I love these. Let's see here. And so Chris and Linda have been hard at work over the years. Um, 
clearing this area out um, because all of this. So when they first found the site, from my understanding, it was completely covered in debris, trees, and brush. Mm. So this is the result of years of clearing this away. And hats hats off to Chris and Linda for doing the work and getting out here to clear this and make it accessible. And then not only that, but opening up their home and their property to allow people to come in here and see it for themselves. How um, much are they charging for tickets? Uh, Where's oh, gosh. I, I think the last time I checked, they were around forty dollars. Right. That yeah. That that sounds right. I remember. To enter the property and ex explore the wall. And they. Hey, Chris and Linda, go to forty nine ninety nine or sixty five dollars. <laughs> I mean, I hate to do that, you know, like, but um, you can charge a little bit more, just a little bit, because let them. I hope they cash in on this, because like I want to go out there and buy a ticket and check it out, and I hope this brings them abundance. I I, I couldn't agree more, um, because. Again, they don't have to do this. It's their it's their private land, and you do have to understand that when you're coming out there, you know if you you know I've heard a, a obviously um, mostly all of the put feedback has been overwhelmingly positive, but I have seen a few comments that are like forty dollars, fifty dollars, whatever. It's like you guys gotta understand. Every time somebody comes out there, they have to stop everything that they're doing with their regular day life and check people in and let people on their property and worry about people like respecting the area. There's lots of people that have come out there and they, they want to sit down and burn things like incense and do, mm. you know, do, do, you know, all the fun hippie stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who, yeah. Stuff. Go have, and, go have and, sex on top of that wall. Yeah. <laughs> you know? guys, it's, 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 sometimes, especially in the summer, the area is so dry, you're really endangering the site. So they're, you know, they're really, you know, extending, their arms to people. And I, I think that that, that, that that the pricing is more than fair. And I couldn't agree with you more. There isn't a more deserving um, uh, couple of people that, that, than them um, for making yeah. all of it accessible and being proactive about um, getting the information and trying to find some answers out here. It's great. Yeah. Now you were saying, now we're going to roll this over to exclusively on Rumble here in just a moment. To anyone mm -hmm. that's listening, the link is in the, or that's listening on or watching on YouTube, the link is in the description. Hit it right now. It'll be a seamless transition. You go right over there uh, because we're going to go into the ground, the results of the ground penetrating radar. Because like I made a video on this uh, 10 months ago. I can't remember what, earlier in the year. Um, and, and a lot of people, everyone's asking. It's like, well, let's get ground radar out there. Let's do some yeah. tests. Uh, and, and thanks to you making these videos, it, it has now happened. Um, but what's amazing is that, well, now they've done it and there's actually something to share. So we're going to share that exclusively over on rumble. Um, let me fly through a few more of these photos here. Uh, I like this one. Um, well, that's a good shot. Uh, and by the way, these are all your shots. You, you took every one of these photos and videos. Yes. I, I like to use, it's something when I started traveling and doing the work because i wanted to fit, use all of my own footage so when you see my videos and stuff like that that's all my footage and my in my videos is um and i wanted to try to get a different perspective of some of these places and i knew that you know one of the big places was long uk's which was a site that caught joe's attention joe rogan's attention and Yangshan Quarry, and I knew that when I got over there, um, I could do something special at the time. Those were my biggest performing videos till the Sage Wall, and that's exactly what happened. There was there was nothing but like we talked about before, kind of blurry and grainy images of Yangshan Quarry, um, and then I was able to drop that video with drone footage and everything. And just what an incredible sight! And uh, you know that kind of leads into the comparisons I've been making between. Yangshan, Baalbek, and and Aswan with these massive megalithic um, quarries and, and structures. These that are that are usually the top three mentioned when it comes to the largest megalithic blocks in the world. Mm. There are those three sites. Uh, Baalbek always seeming to take the the forefront in that, which I 100 yeah. percent disagree with. 100 percent disagree with, with China because it's exponentially uh, Yangshan, larger. It's Yangshan without a doubt. Um, it's not even comparable in my wow. opinion. I've and stood on every one of those mm -hmm. those those blocks and quarries. Yangshan quarry is two Baalbek. It's so wild. So I'm sure the people that follow me know that I went to Baalbek in September 
and it blew my mind. And you were there just a few months earlier. Or how long you ago was that, it? Or was it a year? That, I can't remember. You did that in style, man. You, the, the, your, your traveling partner on that trip was, that was uh, wild. <laughs> what anyone, an amazing experience. GSP, George St. Pierre, to anyone aren't familiar. Yeah, I, I, just the way it worked out, him and I were already following each other. He's into the ancients. And uh, I was able to tag along with him to Baalbek in Egypt. And boy, is that for some Baalbek was my bucket list. Like that's the one site. So let's talk about this real quick before we roll this over to rumble. Okay. So you believe wholeheartedly that China dwarfs it. However, Mm -hmm. let's back burner China for just a moment and focus on what Baalbek represents, which to me and you and I, I know your thoughts on this, but I'm like, if there was one site that was definitive evidence of a lost civilization that was far more advanced than what was taught in school, yeah. it's Baalbek and the Trilithon stones that make up the, the foundation of the Heliopolis. Uh, we're talking 900 ton stones that removed a mile and then lifted and stacked over 30 feet off the ground, completely flush. I've shared pictures on this, but I'm like, for a site that was said to be created by the Romans, yet Ro- the Romans who are renowned for having documented everything, And this is the one site, at least as far as the foundation goes, that they do not annotate who did it or when. Right. And and I'm like, when you're there, you can see the two or even perhaps three different uh, construction methods that it was obviously built on top of. Um, What are your what are your thoughts on Baalbek? I think. Baalbek. I've been everywhere and Baalbek is probably the most amazing site i've ever been to it has everything that you could ever want to look at it has nubs cuts scoops machining tool marks that that look like that you have the some of the largest megalithic stones in the world you have this um comparable level of of building here between these massive blocks and precision fitting here to these that are less precise and smaller where, you know, and to even less and less, you know, it's like, it's just an amazing sight. And some of it is laid out in such a way that you can see the grand scale of what it used to be in such a way that you can almost imagine yourself being there. I can't think of another place that I've walked through that felt like transported me to another place in time so seamlessly as Baalbek. And, and and then then you take into account the area that you're in and it just lends this feeling of a kind of excitement and adventure to what you're doing right because yeah. you know we we heard gunshots going off all over and not far from here at a different site we actually got shot at up on the Hez- mountain sides tell everyone real quick it's in hezbollah controlled region of lebanon it's, it's in hezbollah controlled region there you're you're very close to the border of syria um oh, yeah. uh, i think you can drive to damascus in an hour or two oh. and um it's uh um uh, yeah so you know you're going through checkpoints and all sorts of stuff guys um, with ak's and uniforms yep. like full on and you're, you're gonna hear gunfire we heard gunfire all the time while we were there um you know, thankfully, all, the whole time we were in Baalbek, it was off in the distance. Um, but at the same time, you're meeting people that are incredibly kind, that want to talk to you, that want to meet you. Everybody everybody was following, asking what we were doing. I say YouTube, instantly following me. Oh, very cool. They had YouTube and following us nice. and made friends, and it was great. Now, real but, quick, I want to... Yeah. I want you to show us some more photos, but I'm going to take this opportunity for us to now roll over to Rumble. So everyone yeah. that's on YouTube, the link is in the description. Just click it. You'll follow us seamlessly there. So at this time, I'm going to end it on YouTube. I hope you guys will hit the button because we're going to share some awesome photos of Baalbek, but we're also going to share the results of this ground radar. They found something. It's significant. So it's worthy of your time. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and hit the button on YouTube. The link is in the description.